Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a sequel to the one I released last week. This one's going to be how to get a bond on a pay to play, new pay to play account. Uh, we are using the same one so it's not a level 3 but like if you look at my stats there's not much that's good here. Uh, we just have some magic levels, that's pretty much it. And if you look at my bank, it is empty. I uh, don't mind these mysterious emblems here, that is going to be for another video. Uh, spoiler, a little bit. Because uh, a lot of you guys did enjoy the last video. Now we are going to be giving away the bond today. That is going to be at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. Alright guys, let's get started. Alright guys, we're about to get started. Uh, we're going to put 8 hours on the clock this time. I think we can get it done on less, but just in case we'll put 8. And let's get started. So we're going to start off again by uh, just picking up some ashes. Uh, well, we'll need to wait a second here. <laughs> Uh, but the reason we're doing this is because we obviously have absolutely zero GP, uh, which is kind of required to begin doing anything. Uh, from here, after this, we're going to run into the Wildy. Now, we do have a looting bag, and uh, we could use it. We'll probably grab the looting bag. Uh, the way you get this is just killing things in the wilderness. It's extremely easy to do. And... Uh, yeah, it's easy to get. All we really need is enough coins for a knife. And uh, ideally, maybe a little bit of food as well. Uh, pick up these ashes here. Just maybe a couple more, and then we should be good to go. I'm not actually sure how much ashes are worth. Uh, a little bit, surprisingly. Okay, let's see how much this will sell for. We just need a knife, and uh, yeah, probably some food to be good. Ooh, I think knives actually might be more expensive than this. Knife. Where is the knife? Uh, 100 GP for the knife. Alright. And uh, we'll buy some wines. Wines again are being a very cheap way to get a decent amount of health back. And uh, we can't afford an energy potion. No way at all. And a uh, knife. And oh, anti fire shield. We definitely need that. Pick up a couple more ashes here. People lighting fires on the ashes. Uh, how much is the anti-fire dra anti dragon fire shield? Fire. Anti. Dragon fire shield is 126 coins. Uh, we'll need to grab a couple more. That's fine. There seems to be a lot of ash now. Pick that up. One more. One more. I wonder how much money per hour you could actually get just picking up ash. Probably not a lot. Tank it on the ground here. It's probably not worth that much. Okay, that should be good. And we'll buy the anti-fire shield. And uh, we should be good to go. So for this first method here, you don't really need any requirements. It can be done on a level 3. All you need is a knife, an anti-fire shield, and uh, some food. It is recommended highly to have... Um, <laughs> at least 24 health because their max hit is 23 I believe so I wouldn't go any less than that and uh, we'll go ahead and meet you in Edgeville alright so we're in Edgeville we're just south of the bank right now and uh, we're gonna be pulling the lever to get into the wilderness so clearly this is not a safe method but uh, since we're not actually risking anything and we are pretty low level only level 30 uh, I don't see this as a huge issue so we're gonna pull the lever yeah teleport us to the wilderness I am brave enough and uh, here we go. It's pretty damn quick to get here too. Uh, so from here, you're gonna run down south to the left of the resource area, over here to where this little hole is here, and then down here to the Lava Dragon Isle. Uh, it's a little bit of a long run, but honestly not too bad at all. Keep in mind, if you do take any damage and you do happen to be below uh, 23 HP, I would recommend drinking or eating a piece of food because you don't wanna get one shot, that is no fun, and will waste quite a bit of time. I guess not. In my case, that's going to suck because I'm going to have to go ahead and redo all of this. Okay, so we made it to the Lava Dragon Isle. It only took a couple minutes to get here. So all you have to do is run in here and just be ready to uh, run past the dragons. Ideally, you don't want to get by any of them. Uh, so if you don't have any run energy left, just save it for when you're just going to run by there quickly. Uh, burnt bones, don't think those are worth very much. Just going to hustle down the middle here. Ooh, took a 16. Heal up with the wines. And uh, where you want to go is, oh my god, take a 21. It 
is right here. Uh, right here is a safe spot. All you're going to do is pick up the white berries, toss them in your looting bag, or if not, just fill up an inventory. And they respawn in like two seconds, so it's pretty good. So we're going to fill up our inventory here, and uh, we'll come back when that is done. All right, guys, there's our full inventory done. Now we're going to hustle it out of here quickly, hopefully while the dragons aren't around. I just realized on the way in we did not even wear our anti-dragon fire shield. Uh, but we're bosses and we do not need it anyway. Looks like these guys are going to ignore us, which is nice. And so each inventory here, the, currently the prices of white berries, they are at about 800 or 850 each. That's going to equate to about uh, 25k, probably 40 to 50k for this inventory, uh, which is extremely good for not requiring very much. And all you have to do is run out of here. A run takes probably, I don't know, 5 to 10 minutes, really probably closer to 5. But uh, yeah, we'll go back to the Grand Exchange and sell all this. Alright guys, we're back at the Grand Exchange. Uh, just one thing worth noting is the uh, lever does take you back to Ardun. So be prepared with either a teleport or at least your home teleport to get back to uh, Lumbridge because it can be a long, a long walk otherwise. And uh, yeah, we're back. So we're going to go ahead and pull out all the contents of our looting bag uh, view and then just uh, deposit all, I guess, and then withdraw them. It's kind of a weird way to do that. But either way, deposit all the white berries and we got 50 in total. So that's going to be close to 50k. Probably not exactly. Go ahead and dump that in there. And uh, we got, well, okay, we got 41k. I'm not too bad. All we really needed was some starting money though, and uh, we, that should be good. So we're going to start off by buying a Narda Teleport, and that's going to run us about 4k. A little more, I guess. Narda. So the next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be buying chocolate bars from, uh, god damn, it's even more expensive, uh, from the Narda Chocolate Enthusiast, I guess you would call it. Okay, let's just get this bot. 7,000. Come on. Oh, this thing's expensive. 4.3k. Uh, but we only should have to do this a couple times. And uh, yeah, so we're going to buy from the chocolate shop in Narda. And uh, we'll go ahead and make sure we buy some runes to get back first as well. Uh, I'll just buy a couple law runes. 10 law runes. Some air runes. And uh, some fire runes. Just in case. Uh, we need to get back here. <laughs> uh, so we'll collect that. That leaves us with about 34k left. That's uh, well, more than enough. So we're going to take out our money. So 34k. And we're going to take out our Narda teleport. And that should be all we need. So once you get into Narda, what you're looking for is uh, the chocolate salesman. Should be pretty much right here. And it's over here. Rukor. And you can see here, he sells 25 chocolate bars. And it'll cost 10 each, and they sell on the Grand Exchange for 195, uh, which is about 200 each. So all you do is buy out his chocolate shop. Uh, you can choose the Hop Worlds or just do it like this. And then the bank is just a little bit south. So we're going to go ahead and just do this till either our money's done or it's been about an hour and just see how much we actually make. And we'll go for an hour, hopefully. And uh, we'll come back when uh, we've bought all the chocolates. Alright guys, so we just finished up uh, about uh, just over an hour of buying these chocolate bars and we got about 2300 of them. Uh, we're going to withdraw the runes and then teleport back to the Grand Exchange. And I guess we'll see how much we made. I'm guessing about uh, 400k, uh, which would be good. That'll lead us into our next method. And that is going to be buying death runes from the wilderness shop. This is a little bit risky, but has very low requirements. All you have to do is finish Rune Mysteries, and uh, then you need to do the Abyss Mini Quest. Both are extremely short, both have no requirements, uh, so you can probably get them both done in 10 minutes, uh, which I'm going to promptly do here. But let's first off uh, sell the uh, chocolate bars here. We'll just buy and sell a chocolate bar, and hopefully they um, will sell while we're actually doing the quest line. Chocolate bar. Um, put in for about 250. I think we'll uh, buy for about 200. And yeah, 192. That's not too bad. Is there much loss by selling it uh, instantly? Not a whole lot. Let's just pop those in there for 186. And see how much we actually made. About 424k. Uh, which is pretty decent for an hour of a method where you have no cash to begin with. 
And uh, that's it, guys. Let's go ahead and do Rune Mysteries and then the Abyss mini quest. And we'll get back to you in a minute. All right, so we're just about to finish up Rune Mysteries. Uh, this quest is really quick. And actually, a small tip is if you use the uh, Necklace of Passage, it'll teleport you right to the wizard's uh, tower here. And it is a really good, like, I'll say that took me like three minutes or something. And anyway, there we go. Rune Mysteries has been completed. Now we have to go and finish the Abyss mini quest, uh, which granted won't take too long, and I'll come back when that is done. Okay, so we finished up the Abyss mini quest, it only took about 10 minutes. Uh, I just have to go to a couple places in Gilinor, and just, uh, it's pretty easy. There, are, I'll link a quest guide, it actually gets you the 9 room crafting as well, which is kind of nice. And uh, now we can go ahead and do this method. So what we're going to be doing is heading back to uh, where we talked to the Mage of Zamorak. And we're going to be buying out his death runes. Now this is absolutely risky. So I want to make that fully clear before we do this. You do need to bring a couple hundred K at least into the wilderness with you. Uh, ideally if you had some combat stats you'd be wearing some defensive gear. And you wouldn't really be risking a whole lot because it's not very deep in the wilderness. Uh, but currently I don't really have much I can wear. So it's going to be a little more riskier for me. Uh, while this can be done level 3. It is ideal to be have some combat stats. So we'll go ahead and meet you guys out there and we'll show you just how it works. Alright guys, so we're just a bit north of Edgeville. What we're going to be doing is running out to where the Mage of Zamorak was and uh, talking to him. Because now that we have completed the quest, or the mini quest at least, he will stock a uh, way more runes. Before he only had 50, now you can see he has like 300. So they buy for 258 and 262. They're going to be going for 303 on the Grand Exchange. Uh, he stocks 500 now, so I think you want to buy it till about, um, let's see. Um, you can buy it a bit more than this, maybe down to about 200. And then just hop worlds. It's really easy to do. Again, it's a little risky. And you do have to kind of have balls of steel because people are going to be running at you constantly. Uh, because they are going to be going into the abyss for rune crafting, uh, but most of them you can ignore. See that shop was bought down to about 200, and uh, once you do find a couple worlds that haven't uh, been hit in a while, you can make a pretty decent profit. So we're going to go ahead and spend all our money, and we'll be back once uh, well we spent all our cash. All right, so that took about 10 minutes to do that. Uh, I thought it would last a little longer, then I forgot how much death runes actually cost, and we don't have an agility level for that, don't we? Damn it. Anyway, we'll see how much we made in 10 minutes and see if this is going to be worth it for us. I think it still should be, uh, but we'll see. Alright, so we'll go ahead and uh, sell the death runes back since we do need them right away. Uh, sell them for, I guess, let's see, 302. Nope. Guess 301. Now we'll sell them for 300 and just get it done with. So we got 530k from that, so it's about 100k in 10 minutes, so that's going to be about 600k an hour at the current rate I'm going. I believe I could probably get it up a little bit higher as we get a higher cash stack, and uh, eventually you do, do lose aggro uh, from the skeletons, which make it a lot easier. So if you're there for a while, the aggro law is lost, then uh, you don't waste as much time. Uh, but I think we might go ahead and do something else quickly just to get a little bit more money before we continue doing this. Uh, it looks pretty promising. So because I fi figure we need a little bit more money before we do the death rune method, we're going to do another somewhat risky uh, money maker. Not really risky this one, this one's just a waste of time if you don't do it right. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, telegrabbing uh, Wines of Zamorak and there was just a new update today added uh, that lets you telegraph at the Chaos Temple. Now we're going to wear a glory and this armor I guess yeah sure I guess so and uh, we don't need the necklace of passage right now the necklace of anguish uh, or sorry the burning amulet should teleport you right next to where we need to go and uh, I guess we'll bring a little bit of food although if someone catches us we're kind of screwed anyway so uh, we'll go ahead and teleport out there and we can see where we go so we're gonna go to the lava maze I think and then from here you're just going to run to the left and don't get confused by teleporting to the chaos temple because that is a completely other location way down here 
and that's not the one you want. What you want is this one over here is a little uh, random chaos temple just uh, west of where the teleport puts you. And don't be fooled by there actually being nobody in there. You do indeed need to uh, telegrab, uh, which is uh, fairly important. Alright, so we're just going to be doing what you'd be doing on any other uh, regular telegrabbing. You're just going to grab it. And, uh, well, let's see how long it takes to respawn. Most likely, we'll just be hopping worlds, because I will be a little bit less likely to be PK'd then. Although, I think hopping will be a lot quicker. And it should be about a 15 second respawn. Doesn't look like they changed it at all. Uh, so, I think we'll, yeah, we'll hop worlds, uh, even if it is kind of risky. It's about 20 seconds still. I wasn't sure if they're going to change it with the Wilderness Edition. And any second now, it should spawn. And we'll just start hopping worlds. So we'll go do this with our 100 casts. And then we'll go probably do a couple hundred more. But we're only going to do 100 at a time. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. Alright, so we're just finishing up our Wines of Zamorak. Uh, we keep getting uh, kicked from the world, so we're just going to run back now. But we did fin uh, fill up our entire uh, looting bag and pretty much our entire inventory. Realizing that we didn't actually need to bring 50 law runes. Uh, but yeah, if you have the uh, Wilderness Hard Diaries completed, you do are actually able to uh, note the uh, the things you telegraph, which is kind of cool. Uh, either way, I think we're going to get about 170 or 180k or something uh, from this. Oh my god, we should probably not run this way. Uh, but I think we're in level 30 Wilderness and we can teleport out. So while I did see PKers, it wasn't terribly risky honestly. Uh, we'll check how long that took us in a minute but uh, I definitely got the wines way quicker than I normally would have and if we go ahead and deposit all these and price check obviously we need to take off a little bit for runes but it's not that substantial and the price check is going to come in at about 155k so we'll go ahead sell those and see if this can be worth it and if it is we'll do this for another hour or two. Alright, so I just checked quickly, and that took us about 15 minutes to do uh, about, well, I guess about 50 Wines of Zamorak, or 46. Uh, they're going to be worth, uh, I guess they're worth a little bit less right now, unfortunately. Obviously, the update is crashing the price a little bit, but either way, we still sold them for about 146k in profit. 146k in 15 minutes is going to equate to about 600k an hour. If you had the Wilderness Hard Diaries, I would tack on a little bit more to that. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and do this. Seems pretty good. I will do it for at least another hour. Honestly, that wasn't too bad. I did it for about an hour, and uh, there definitely were PKers hopping around, but I didn't really feel like it really mattered if they killed me that much. It's pretty quick to get back here. All I had was 50 Law Runes, really, at a time. Of course, I'd lose the Zamorak Wines. I did once, uh, but I kind of like it. It's not too bad and way less crowded than uh, the regular spot in Edgeville, or, or sorry, in uh, Faldor. But uh, yeah, let's just see how many we managed to get, uh, because we were pretty successful. We died with about 15 of them on us, but uh, I wouldn't say that's too awful. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, view our looting bag. Oh, we didn't fill it up. Whoops. And deposit those. So we have about 210 wines of Zamorak to sell. So we'll go ahead and withdraw everything here, see how much we have in the end, and then we'll probably go ahead and start the death rune grind. Alright, we're back at the GE, so let's go ahead and sell these Zamorak wines off. Eh, drop them down. Did we sell them for 673? Not quite, unfortunately. A little bit lower, but that is still pretty good, considering that only took us about an hour. 669k. Pretty damn good. Again, with the noted feature, you'd probably get up to about 800k. Although, you wouldn't want to stay there that long, honestly, anyways. I wouldn't say it's a huge requirement at all. So that puts us at about 1.2 mil, and we're about four hours in. So now we're going to go ahead and buy those death runes out, and uh, that should get us between 7 or 800k an hour. It used to be a lot better, but right now it's still pretty decent, and uh, yeah, we'll start on that grind. Alright, we're heading to the wilderness with 1.2 mil. Doesn't seem like a great idea, but uh, we're doing it anyway. So we're going to go ahead and buy more death runes from the shop. Uh, it's not terribly risky, but yeah, I mean it is 1.2 mil, and we could die to a skeleton almost. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and do this for a little bit, and come back when we have spent all our money. Alright, we survived just fine. Uh, we ended up with 51 4-8 death runes, 
uh, which we could sell for about 1.56 mil roughly uh, which would be about a two or three hundred K profit I will double check in a second here but uh, pretty good it took us about 25 minutes or so and uh, yeah no uh, uneventful just like I like it <laughs> didn't get killed or anything and we'll go check the grand exchange for the profit all right so we started at about 1264 K and we're gonna sell these off for 1554 uh, so about 320k in about half an hour maybe a bit less so about 600 to 700k an hour again that used to be quite a bit better uh, but still 700k really can't say no to that so we'll go ahead and do that one more time uh, for well another half an hour 45 minutes or so and I'll uh, be back in a minute all right so we successfully bought all these death runes from the shop about 6.2k of them uh, took about 35 or 40 minutes or something and I will go ahead and sell these and see what we end up with it's gonna be pretty close to 2 mil 1871 all right so we need about another 600k or so and I think what we're gonna do now is do a couple flips now uh, we're looking at a couple items here on GE tracker for those who don't know it is a GE tracking tool that is a uh, pretty damn good now, there's a link in the description for that uh, what we're thinking of doing right now is the robe top of darkness robe top bottom to be precise and a uh, really good margin don't buy a whole lot but we'll go ahead and put an offer in for some of those 138 robe bottom of darkness uh 138k and yeah, i'll put three of those in and uh, the other thing we're looking at quickly was the armadillo page three had a pretty decent margin on them so they're down to about 254 uh we'll put an offer in for about 255 for those armadillo page three and uh 255k these things buy pretty quick so we'll go ahead and put an offer in for and <laughs> i can't afford that many five we'll do five all right, we'll come back when these items have flipped. All right, so we managed to flip these seven items in about an hour, and I think this just might be enough to buy a bond, 2338. They are a little bit down right now, uh, so we're kind of lucking out. We'll go ahead and sell off the rest of the stuff we have here as well. Anything else of value? Not really. Uh, we'll sell this off just in case we need a little bit of extra money. I kind of doubt it and sell all these lobsters off we won't need these anymore and collect so we have 2350 we'll see if we can instantly buy the bond otherwise i think we're just gonna wait it's getting kind of late and uh well let's see i'm kind of confident i believe can we get the bond damn it all right guys there we go we have successfully bought the bond it didn't take that long to buy and luckily the prices are a bit down so we did actually manage to get it so we got a bond for 2.3 mil and there we go so it took us about six hours to do this definitely better than my free to play attempt probably could have shaved a couple hours off of here by grinding up the same method a bit longer but i thought this would be a bit more interesting and now for what a lot of you guys have been waiting for the giveaway for the last episode of my uh, from scratch video mini series, I guess you could call it. Uh, we're gonna draw a name for who's gonna win the bond from last week, and so we got open here. We are gonna do a random comment. Uh, instead of doing the wheel decide, we're deciding to go with this just because there's a lot of comments and this will probably be a lot easier. So let's start the raffle and see who's going to be the winner. Ham236. I just came back to RuneScape after 8 plus years. I grinded my way to a bond, but it's about to run out. With a new bond, I'll be able to keep flipping as a member and hopefully build up enough cash stack to stay self sufficient. Thanks for the vids, they help a lot. Alright, Ham, appreciate it. Um, I'll send you a message in the comment section, and uh, once I have your in game name, I will uh, trade you the bond. So, congratulations. On top of that, I have decided to give away the bond from this episode as well. Uh, because it seemed to do uh, well people obviously enjoy that and it did generate a lot of comments so for this giveaway it's going to be the exact same as the last one just leave a comment 
like the video, and just make sure you are subscribed to my channel. And uh, we're doing another bond giveaway, so you have one more chance. If you didn't win, definitely go and give it another try. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.